pad. Could come an interesting point here. Those Claris we just mentioned, really important for getting those Charizards out, as well as the Cramorant, as well if they go down early. So the Pelpad being able to shuffle in those Claris. So you can maybe lose someone, maybe play one a bit earlier. But of course, that's going to come out around the middle game. So hopefully, Owen is able to utilize it. Yes, I think it, it, in the grand scheme of things, as prizes, if you could pick those as prizes, I think you would take that, honestly. Um, especially considering usually you use Power Pad later on anyway. So by the time you take it as a prize is when you'd want to use it. So probably going to work out pretty well. These two players are raring to go to fight for a, a sibling rivalry match for the spots in top eight. Um, not something you see very, very often, but when it does, I mean, the short, I think there's got to be fireworks. Of course, I mean, you very rarely see sibling shows down earlier in the tournament in the lower tables, you know, the, the odds of running into each other mm -hmm. quite low, but both of these players have made it all the way to round 14 <laughs> and ready to knock the other out of top eight. And of course, I'm sure family dinner will be awkward <laughs> tomorrow night <laughs> if that happens. However, on the other hand, I hope they'll be very happy for each other if one goes through. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. That will probably be the more prevailing feeling <laughs> I would like to think. So, so just waiting for this game to get started. Both players eager to go. I can see a VIP pass in Owen's hand. I think oh. Owen opted to go. No, Brendan opted to go first, I believe. So that VIP pass in Owen's hand going to come in handy to get those sobbles down turn one. And I can't see Brennan's hand at the minute, but we'll have to see what comes of that. And the fist bump and off we go. That Confe start and the Pelkia V. Confe, exactly what you want to see in the active at this point. Yes, uh, Brennan going first. Starting off a Pokestop, going to fire that off straight away. Looks like, uh, oh, finding an escape rope and discarding a Drapion, which is not too relevant, and a Psychic Energy, which you can get back from Clara. So I actually, not too bad. those discards, very nice. That Psychic Energy, we said sometimes the best place for the energy to be is in the discard, ready to be used with that Clara, getting everything you need in one supporter. And of course, that Drapion, he's glad already he didn't start it, but also don't want to draw into it. No, no, very much not. So... Glad to sort of get that out of the way quickly. Um, Flower selecting comes in. Uh, one Cramrant hitting the Lost Zone. Scoop up net now after another Comfey getting benched. Flower selecting number two going to come into play. Already starting to build up that Lost Zone well. Uh, what is the hit off of Flower selecting? Just getting rid of a Poke Gear straight away. Yeah, I'm sure the other card is probably a lot more important than whatever that, that Poke Gear was. Uh, yeah, one off Poke Gear in this deck. And I'll be honest, every game that I've seen Brennan play, I've not seen the Poke Gear be <laughs> used yet. It seems to be in the Lost Zone every time. So I'll be very interested to find out if that is coming handy at all this weekend but of course the perfect card to see turn one as we always see yeah. the ip pass <laughs> yeah, battle. and it looks as if the cramoran is going to be definitely the choice of pokemon for the first pick and perhaps a mana fee right behind it understanding how important that is to protect his comp phase from that Greninja. Yeah, we mentioned, of course, at the beginning of the game how one of the ways that the Palkia deck can really overcome the Lost Zone box is if a Manaphy doesn't hit the field early enough, some shenanigans of Radiant Greninja, you know, a double knockout of Moonlight Shuriken is going to put you in a very good way. In this instance, Brennan is just saying no to that straight away, essentially. Yeah, and of course, we know that Brennan plays two Manaphy as well. We've seen a couple of situations arise where there are um, knockouts on the Manaphy, not able to get it down again, and although you thought you were protected, all of a sudden your board is wide open again, but that Manaphy not in the prizes, Brennan is definitely going to have access to it. Yeah, Brennan absolutely will. Uh, going to put down the Comfy that was scoop up netted uh, into play again. Uh, don't think there's any more ways to switch, unfortunately, for Brennan, so it might. Oh, 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 of course, yeah, the, the one from go, the, the Pokestop. Pelkia not moving anywhere, not able to go, but of course, those Comfy switching positions, I think. That's another VIP pass. Brennan it able is. to fill up his bench more if he so wishes, but no, straight into the loss. And I didn't actually see the other card, but straight into hand. Brennan looking good already. Three in the loss zone. That yes. camera ran almost ready, and I'm sure it will come to life on his second turn. I can only imagine whatever card Brennan picked was more important than the battle VIP pass in that instance. So, yeah, that's going to go to the loss zone. Now he's going to be back on Owen to mount a uh, counter setup and already starting off well with a capacious bucket, getting two water engines out of the deck and looking through to check the prizes very quickly. Yeah, this late in the tournament, you see players sequencing everything right and time and time again, that capacious bucket, getting two water energy out of the deck, especially if you can get Greninja down this turn, one discard of that energy allows you to use Greninja, but not only that, you have increased your odds of seeing what you want to see, taking two cards out of the deck already. Yeah, absolutely wonderful to see that. So, and it looks like Owen actually has a battle VIP pass in hand as well. So both players gonna be able to fight it off turn one. Gotta be pretty, feeling pretty happy about that. 
and the VI pass comes. I'm sure we will see that Radiant Greninja come to hand and the Sobble looks to be the other pick thus far. And here they both are out to play. That Greninja ready to use that concealed cards and of course Sobble waiting to be evolved. Not quite useful yet but I'm sure he will be throughout this game. Yeah, Radiant Greninja, the powering force behind this Palkia deck, the concealed cards ability, just enabling you to dig through your deck so quickly and set up your discard pile of energies to use with Star Portal. And then not only that, of course, but that Moonlight Shuriken attack coming in so handy against so many decks to just uh, take uh, multiple knockouts and really set your opponent back. Yeah, and we see another Capacious Bucket here. So that's a total of four energy wow. this turn. Owen is utilizing the fact that he's going to be able to use multiple concealed cards now, but not only that, he's definitely going to have an attachment to the Pelkia V, meaning that it's most likely he will be able to attack turn two. Yes. Finding a quick ball as well off of the uh, concealed cards just there, going to be very handy for him if he wants to maybe get down another Sobble or maybe another Palkia. Going to be <laughs> going to have to consider which one would be the best approach to take here. Brennan was able to get free in the Lost Zone on turn one, so I think 10 on turn two is not outside the realm's possibility. Again, it'll be a bit of a stretch. You'd have to see a lot of switching cards to do that, but it might be something Owen wants to consider in terms of uh, the decision-making of what is the better basic to get off this quick ball right now. We can see he's thinking about it pretty hard. Yeah, of course, as he said, Brennan, unlikely to get that Sableye turn two. However, there is possibility with Chorus being able to play on his second turn. We've already got two Comfe in play. A third could easily come down the board. And of course, there is a Stadium in play, meaning that that can be lost zone by Lost Vacuum. Uh, oh, well. that, that is very true, yeah. So that can sort of get uh, Brennan further into it as well with the Lost Vacuum. So often it's used to, in these Lost Zone box decks, get yourself to 10 in the loss zone more than it is for its function of you know, getting rid of one of your opponent's stadiums or tools. Of course, it's a card with two faces, can use advantageous for yourself or alternatively to disrupt your opponent. Owen here does end up discarding that echoing horn with the quick ball, going for another sobble by the looks of things. And he knows that there isn't really a threat on Brennan's side of the board of these sobbles being sniped right now. That Sableye is a little bit far away. He's going to be hoping that those seven cards don't come down, Freya. But there is a possibility, as we said. Yeah, there, there, there really is. And it looks like Owen's actually going to end the turn just by using Rule the Region. Of course, that uh, Palkia's first attack for one energy just lets you search your deck for any stadium card. If you've got nothing better to do, then why not, right? And Rule the, uh, rule the Region means that Lost Vacuum is even nicer now, not discarding your own. Uh, Brennan here can use his poker stop early in the turn. Perhaps get that lost back here. If he needs to get those last two in the lost zone to get himself to 10, getting rid of a training court. Oh, I didn't come down in the end mode. Oh, no, no. So it stayed in hand. But well, it has to, right? Because it goes to hand from the attack. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought it came straight down. That's no, no, no. <laughs> no, so a rule region does put it straight to hand. So Owen's going to have to wait until next turn to play it regardless. But and fire, fire energy, energy in the discard pile. Exactly where Brennan wants it. That Clara becoming half active so far. The Radiant Zard in hand currently whether it will hit the field or end up in the discard, ready to be drawn by that Clara. And the first flower selecting of the turn, two switching outs for Brennan, both the switch card and a rope. The rope, of course, moving the Pelkia. I'm sure that is where the Cramorant wants to put its damage. So I think the switch card here, the ideal choice. Yeah, definitely. I think the switch card definitely uh, going to be the better call here, given that you don't really want to move um, Owen's active out of the way just yet. But you do want to get more flower selections going. So switch cart, we're going to the other Comfe. We're going to see flower selecting number two. And what's it going to be here? Oh, we've got a third Comfe and... Another is that poker stop, I think. It's, uh, that's what it looked like. Yeah, I'm not sure. But in any case, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, you want to get a third Comfe down. And you have... Oh, there's another escape rope in hand. So if more flower selections are needed, that could still be played as an option. It might be that uh, Brennan is sort of forced to do that in that way. We'll uh, see. Yeah, he does actually go for it. So in the end going to be bringing up the Radiant Greninja on Owen's side. So Kramer can still hit that for 110, but and then maybe finish off later with two damage counters from a Lost Mine. Yes. But I guess not quite the same impact. It's, it's hard to say, honestly. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's been a talking point a lot this weekend, that Kramer run hitting into the Greninja. I think in this deck, it's definitely not something that matters too much of uh, the Sableye always giving you access to late game knockouts where any of your damage counters have already been. Um, but it could be a case that Brennan just holds on to his Kramer Rant, tries to hide it. That Pelkia, obviously a two prize Pokemon. So as long as it's in the active, Owen is going to be under fire. And Brennan will always be happy to, to take two prize knockouts with a one prizer. So the Comfe now with an air balloon. 
There has not been a manual switch yet, so we might see the Cramorant come in here, and it does. 110 to that Greninja, leaving it with 20 H. Oh, oh boss is orders. orders as well. That is a brilliant turn for Brandon. Taking away one of those Sobbles means Owen's next turn is going to be slightly less consistent now. Not an option for two Drizziles. And, of course, one prize straight off the bat for Brennan on his second turn. Yeah, that's a pretty ideal turn for Brennan there. Boss's orders on the Sobble. Could really cutting off Owen's consistency. Only going to be able to access, like you said, one Drizzile this turn. So not going to be able to find as much to set up. I mean, Owen's hand is still pretty big. So I can't imagine this turn would be too terrible all the same. But I think that was very, very important find for Brennan there. Yeah, and I think Owen starting off the turn here with that concealed card ability. And of course, drawing into it, it looks like another Pelkia V there. He is going to need multiple attackers in this game. I don't think one Pelkia V star is going to do the job for no, him, especially I don't think not so that either. Radiant Zard. So it's quite important. Those come down, not necessarily this turn, but at some point before we get to those Charizard turns, so he's got other options. And we do see it come down now. So the bench not looking as it typically does for Pelkia. Owen would like to see more Sobbles, but knowing how ineffective it can be with Sableye coming out. Yes, so Evolution Incense now go coming in to find that one Drizzile. Shady Dealing's going to find Owen any trainer that he likes, and he's going to look and consider carefully as to what would be the best thing to grab here. He needs to find the Palkia V-Star to attack. He needs to attach another energy as well, just to uh, have to get that subspace as well going. And it looks like already Irida probably is going to be the best choice to achieve that. Yeah, that Irida definitely being able to grab him the Pelkia V-Star. And then, of course, another item being able to help him along the way. It looks like he's going for the Cross Switcher here. So maybe a Gusting play to take out something nice. Perhaps that Mana Thief, yes. hoping that Brennan can't get it back down. And then bringing Greninja into play. You've got to be thinking about that Mana Thief. We, we said before, one of the key ways that the Palkia can really tear, swing the advantage is if you can do a Moonlight Shuriken to KO two things. Otherwise, you are having to take six attacks to knock out uh, six prizes to win. And that's obviously just not ideal when you're playing Palkia. So, yeah, it looks like Cross Switcher is like, going to be the option here. Does Owen have the means to actually get the Cross Switch, but then also power up another attacker? Because, of course, you have to switch yourself. So, I think it, it can't really... Without these of a Star Portal, I think it can't really happen. Yeah, a Star Portal, or perhaps just another switch being able to just attach to the Pelkia again, obviously. But as you said, just a bit of a combo here. Owen needs to look at his things. He was considering the Evo incense for a little bit, so perhaps thinking there are odds that I don't get this combo off this turn, or maybe don't want to use my Star Portal this early in the game. However, it does look like that cross switch is coming out. And it's for a Comfe with the Balloon. Interesting. And Brennan's face says, interesting choice. And yes. I agree. I'm interested to see what the line of play is here. The Pelkia coming into the active with a scoop up net. And now Greninja back down. I think we're about to see a concealed card. Owen looking through the discard, trying to see if he's going to get maximum benefit out of this Star Portal. Obviously, three energy allowed. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh not quite sure what the line of play is here. Again, uh, maybe Owen has more inf access to information than we do. Um, we don't quite uh, you know, see what the what the line of thinking is, but I'm sure we'll, whatever it is, we'll see it play out over the next few turns as uh, Owen does attach the energy manually to the Palkia. And yeah, it looks like it's just going to be a subspace swell knockout on the Comfe. Yeah. Joining Brennan on five prizes. So not the worst. At least there was a... KO. As we said, this game, so much tempo needed from these two prize decks. They need to get through six knockouts. They need to keep their resources. Maybe that's why Owen decided not to start Portal, thinking there may be another time in the game where he's running low and he's able to recharge mm -hmm. everything. So just the knockout here, the easy route. But then it does beg the question why the Manaphy wasn't the target. It's uh, maybe that air balloon on the Comfe was considered to giving, as giving Brennan too much flexibility, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. I think it's definitely an interesting line. Uh, maybe Owen knows how much Brennan's going to prioritize that Manaphy. Maybe thinking the Clara's a very high possibility and not really worth taking for any other reason than to hope you can get your Greninja play off. Um, but obviously there's a million and one reasons as to why. But we are now in Brennan's turn. A flower selecting already. And now the second one putting the skate rope in the loss zone and a scoop up net to hand. There's also a, um, the Comfy still in hand again, so we can get another one down again with that scoop up net that brought it back to hand. And of course, making our way now to 10, that magic number for Lost Mine on yeah. Sableye. Yeah, once you hit 10 in the Lost Zone, that's when things start to really get scary when you're playing against Lost Box. You are facing against this uh, one prize attacker that can just sprinkle 12 damage counters whatever way it likes onto your field, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Yeah. 
and we see the Colrest come out. So that means we're definitely going to reach that point of 10 this turn. Obviously, a Sableye hitting the Lost Zone in order to grab that Colrest. But I think Brennan prioritizing getting to that magic number. He now he knows that all doors are open to him. He has the master key. Can he open the door? That's a, that's a very, very eloquent way to put it. And uh, as we see from the Colrest experiment, the, one of the companies, uh, well, what the remaining companies in Brennan's deck goes into the Lost Zone from that five picked. But it looks like it's the Zigzagoon actually going in there as well. Maybe thinking it's not the extra one damage counter it plays. It's not really worth it at this point in time. Of course, and now 11 in the Lost Zone. One more than he needed, but one more he is definitely happy with. Looking at all his options here, probably that quick ball for the Sableye now, wanting to place those damage counters. That Drizzle could definitely see itself go down this turn. And Freya, you said last game, those three damage counters on the Pelkia are really important sometimes if you're not able to hit that ban for the Charizard, to be able to hit that one hit knockout. Yes, and we actually saw Brennan just discard there a Clara from a quick ball. So if the Manifu was KO'd, then Brennan would have played the Clara, Clara without a doubt to get it back. But then again, you could say if that was the if that was forced to be played, then Brennan couldn't have played the Colossus Experiment and that would have also set him back. Yes, of course. I mean, there's lots of twists in this tale. Owen will have to ask him if we are able to why he went for that line. Of course, Brennan now looking to set up a really establishing board state here. Getting the energy back out with that training court, helping him out as well. Those poker stops helping him. And now the training court, that Confei, just a switch cart now into the Sableye. And I think we might just see that 90 to the Drizzile and maybe 30 to either one of the Pelkias. I've got to imagine that's what's happening here. It just, uh, again, cutting off more of Owen's consistency options. There's going to be no option for a Shady Dealings Intellion next turn if this happens. And then, yeah, making it so that you don't have to dig for the Choice Belt in order to KO the Palkia V-Star next turn as well. And that's exactly what's happened. Exactly that. And uh, uh, it's important to note as well, you know, we've discussed Pelkia, that Intellion engine, amazing to be able to cherry pick the cards you want, but no other draw power in the deck besides for Greninja. The most that Owen can see off the top of the deck this turn is two cards if he's able to access the energy. It's really, really upsetting when you don't have any shady dealings to use on your turn. No, so Training Court uh, gets used by Owen straight away to bring back Water Energy just to then discard it again with the concealed cards to draw a couple of extra, but... That big charm, able to cancel out the oh, 30 that damage is true. put there by the Sableye. Of course, that damage can just be added again by another Lost Mine, but <laughs> at least it keeps the Charizard at bay for now. Yes, it's it another, sure does. It's a few turns yet till it becomes a threat, but of course, Owen's going to have that in mind. Capacious Bucket grabs two Water Energies from the deck, and uh, I think there could be a consideration if Owen has another Scoop Up Net to just pick it up, uh, pick up the Greninja and put it back down and do concealed cards again just to try and draw more. And going to be playing an Irida now. Really, really tough for Owen considering there are no Inteleon pieces out. There's no Sobbles, there's no Drizziles. There are no option for Shady Dealings this turn. And when you're a Palkia Inteleon deck and you have no Inteleon part, that's got to feel, it's got to yeah, be a bit of a struggle. Can't feel great. And Owen in an awkward position here as well. He knows that he wants Sobbles out, but he knows that those Sobbles can't evolve this turn, meaning that he is going to be putting things in the firing line of Sableye if he does put it down. Opting for the, not the Corvominable, going for the Pelkia V-Star to be able to evolve that V on the bench and the item, the scoop of net, as you just said, Freya, maybe being able to reactivate that concealed cards, drawing that. If you haven't got Intellion on board to handpick the cards, you might as well see as many as you can. Yeah, and that's going to have to be the way that o Owen goes for consistency now because now that the Lost Mine is active, there is no way any Sobble survives. You'd have to basically bench three in one go, just to have one survive, and by doing that, you'd still be giving your opponent two prizes, which is really not what you want to be doing right of now. Of course, that is absolutely not, especially not when Brennan already finds himself ahead in this game. The knockout on the Sableye here, and we're back over to Brennan. That Confei obviously moved up into the active, that flower selecting still good in this game to see extra cards, although the Lost Zone is at that magic number, and Brennan eyeing up his discard pile. Imagine there's maybe a Clara play on the cards here. Yeah, you've got to imagine it. So there's uh, a... Is that a Clara coming down now? Yes, yes. it is. Uh, hesitates a little bit for putting it down, but does decide to go for it. Going to be able to grab back that fire energy and a psychic energy as well as a Sableye and a Comfey. So getting back a lot of Pokemon resources that are, of course, very, very important. Now, if you're Brennan here, you've got to be hoping you can take a knockout and get that power pad out of the prizes. But unfortunately, I don't see anything currently that actually can be knocked out because... Greninja has 130, and both the Palkias are way, way out of range of being knocked out. Of course, and I think another really important thing to note as well is that that Clara for the Sableye is 
absolutely integral to this turn. As you can see, there is one already in the loss zone. There is one in the prizes. There is a total of three in Brennan's deck. Oh, you're right. Sableye was the only one available to him to use this lost mine. So that Clara huge on that turn. And obviously, very happy to see it. Thinking about that caper toughness, doesn't think it's worth it in the end. And of course, that flies like now that loss of vacuum oh. could be nice to get rid of that training court. Slow down Owen a little bit. Hopefully, stopping that concealed cards from being as good. The problem, of course, with the cape of toughness is the fact that uh, it doesn't really do enough to boost Sableye out of being KO'd range. Like 70 up to 120, sure, it's nice, but it's not <laughs> really helping you against staring down a Palkia that's already fully charged up. Maybe he just wants to give his Sableye a nice accessory to wear, Freya. But maybe. On, that's maybe. obviously the real reason, I, right? I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you obviously know you've obviously uh, studied more than I have. <laughs> So the switch guard here, setting the comedy bench, a very simple turn from Brenner here, but I don't think there's a lot that he has to do this no. turn. He just has to continue putting the pressure on Owen's side of the board, but the most important thing we continue to mention is at least three damage counters on those Pelkia V-Stars. Yeah, that is that is by far the most important thing, and considering you have residual damage uh, left to do, um, there's actually another factor that I didn't even think about here. These two players, obviously, being brothers, they probably know each other's full 60-card yes. list. If we, if we imagine so. So Brennan might, knowing that Owen plays Big Charm, consider putting extra on the power kit so that even a Big Charm power kit can still be uh, knocked out with a Radiant Charizard that doesn't have a choice belt on it. Right, I think what we might see here is a nice little mix-up. 60, 60 potentially. What might also be a good idea is 60, 40, maybe 20 on Greninja, meaning that Cramorant can come in late game and take a nice knockout on that 130 HP Pokemon. And I think that might be what we see here or close to. I think maybe only 10 damage on that Greninja, but something Brennan has considered. Yeah, I mean, 10 on the Greninja means that another lost mine will still get the KO. So it's still like a relevant number to put on, just like the 10 damage there. But the problem is now that obviously Brennan is going to have this Sableye KO'd and be left with no other Sableyes until he either gets one out of the prizes or he hits another Clara, which I do believe both the Claras at this point have already been played. Yeah, I think they have both been played. I'm just looking now to see how many Choice Band are in the deck. It doesn't look like any. Oh, there is, so there's choice no Choice Belt. Deck. Okay, so there's no Choice Belt in Brennan's list. So actually the whole, the whole point is irrelevant any, anyway. Uh, or rather, no, you could argue, argue even more relevant because now you definitely don't need to put that much on the Palkia in order to, to get a knockout without a uh, without a choice belt hand because you never have access to the choice belt anyway. Definitely, and it does mean that that Charizard does become a, a, a threat on uh, Brennan's next turn, but of course he's going to need a boss's orders to be able to KO the Palkia on the bench because the one in the active currently without a band cannot be... KO'd and it looks like Owen here flipping his V-Star counter and attaching those water energy with Star Portal. I think it'd be really interesting here to see the big charm come onto the bench pal here as well, maybe pushing that out of range as well for Owen, sort of checkmating Brennan's Lost Mine and Charizard later in the game. Yeah, another energy going onto the Radiant Greninja for Owen and that big charm coming down actually onto the Radiant Greninja, interestingly enough. So now it's once again out of range of a lost mine. Owen probably thinking that the Radiant Greninja is really important to preserve right now. Um, and maybe Owen also thinking now that both the Claras have been played, now is the time to go for the Manaphy. Yes, I think that is definitely something that should be considered. We know that that Pelpad uh, Pel is prized as well. Owen's not going to know that, but he's going to know the odds of hitting that are far lower than hitting either of the Claras. Exactly. So he needs to go for this aggressive play, get rid of the Manaphy, and hopefully take two prizes with Greninja there. Yeah, that's going to be the key thing. And as well, even if Brennan's uh, Palpad isn't prized, Owen doing this forces Brennan to dig for it, you know, dig further into the deck, potential maestral resources to find the power pad, and then dig again to find the Claras that he just power padded back in. So it's going to be very, very awkward for Brennan to pull off a Clara next turn, no matter which way you look at it, especially when this rock sand gets played, but no. Owen just realized that you can't play the rock sand. And Brent it didn't, luckily, yes. go the same way as it went last time. The hand did not go into the deck yet. Brennan on four prizes. Three needed yes. to be able to play Roxanne for those sitting at home. However, the other card in Owen's hand is a boss's orders. He could go for that Manaphy play now with the Pelkia in the active. It is another route he could go or just getting rid of the Sableye. Yeah, very good that Owen caught that before you know, anything horrendous happened. We didn't want, we don't want to repeat what happened yesterday, of course, on stream. With of course the, not. <laughs> the Roxanne game loss is uh, yeah, never, never a fun situation to be in. But uh, no, it has been avoided this time. So now 
uh, Owen takes the KO just with the Subso spell on the active on the Sableye. And now it's back to Brennan who ends up quick balling away a Comfey and looks to see that, uh, that uh, sorry Brennan, but that Pal Pad is no longer, oh, not currently in the deck. Yeah, it is not the quick ball. He knows this by now. There are not many cards to look through anymore. He should see it in plain sight now. No Pell Pad available at the minute. The second mana fee coming to hand. Maybe Brennan recognizing that without that Pell Pad in the deck, I need to make sure I have the uh, assurance that this Greninja is not going to take two prizes yeah. at any point. Brennan seeing the Roxanne off the flower selecting, knowing that he can now play it, seeing as Owen has gone down to three, but opting to take the fire energy, switching back in hand. Spoke too soon. <sighs> Brennan considering his options here. He knows that the Roxanne could put this Pelkia out of the way, not having any Drizziles or Intellions on the board. It might be hard to draw out of two cards without hitting energy. And the Roxanne goes. I think the training court there maybe influenced the decision, knowing that Owen could at least get two cards his next turn if that was still in play, and I mean, opting for the fire energy. I mean, it's really tough, right? Because obviously the Roxanne is really great as a comeback card, but at the same time, you don't have many fire energy left to work with. You know for a fact that both your Claras are gone and you don't have access to your Pal Pad. So maybe in that instance, just making sure that you have access to the fire energy is more important, which is why that ended up being, you know, the the Lost Zone card that, that had to go, even though you really, really would rather play that card this turn. Yeah, and, and Brennan here, looking at all his supporters, looking at what he's played, he knows the Pell Pad is not there at the minute. I'm gonna face, he's looking at how many cards are left in the deck as well. He's got a bit of time. There's no chance of him decking out anytime soon. There's gonna be a few more turns in this game, but it looks like it's just gonna be a retreat into Cramorant, I think, 110 damage on that Pelkia, setting it up. Charizard will then be able to hit it for the second time and knock it out. And of course, the Cramorant only being a one prize and not too much of a risk to just be swinging with. Yeah, that. but I think you've got to give uh, Owen the favor here, right? Uh, Brennan right now is in such a tricky position with just, just with amount of resources left or lack thereof because this Cramorant is going down and I'm fairly sure that the other one is also gone. So, you know, Brennan can uh, uh, do the spit innocently right now, but he doesn't have anything to follow up with here. It's uh, going to have to be rely on Radiant Charizard essentially once this Cramorant gets KO'd. It's quite funny as well because Brennan finds himself in a position where taking prizes is what he needs to do to keep himself in the game simply because of that Pell Pad and yet he doesn't have anything on board efficient enough at the minute to be no. able to take those prizes. Of course that Radiant Zard is going to be able to take it but that's his last big threat left. He needs to save that for the the right opportunity. He knows that the active Pelk here is easier to knock out now with 110 on it. He wants to be aiming for the one on the bench with that Radiant Zard. And we go over to Owen now, a start to his turn. I'm sure we're going to see a concealed card, see everything else that he needs. His hand already pretty big. He has lots of answers. Yeah, so this has got to be the game plan, right? This Cramorant gets KO'd now by Owen, or something gets KO'd. Brennan then goes ahead and brings up the Radiant Charizard with a Fire Energy to KO a Palkia. Then two prizes left. Owen KOs something, uh, probably the Radiant Zard because that's the biggest threat on the board. Then, but th in that case, Brennan needs to pow hope that he hits Power Pad, which, if we're assuming a prize taking order, probably will happen. Power Pad both the Claras back in, hope to hit it off Comfy, Comfy the Radiant Charizard back. And take the win with there. Up the win that's that that's way. that's got to be the game plan for Brennan right now. And it is just an attack with that subspace well, sending that Cramorant to the discard pile. And Brennan now eyeing up what he's able to do. That right hand is there. Oh, hello. So the Charizard in hand as well. The fire and he's got all the pieces needed to be able to use the Charizard. But does he have a switch out for that Comfey? Well, what he could do. Two Colorus and two VIP oh. has left in deck. Two great cards. Two bad ones, but none you can use. That Chorus no. will draw you out of the game if he is to use it. So, of course, that Manaphy going to the bin, checking what he has left. The Charizard coming down now. One energy, 250 damage. I mean, uh, and the Cape of Toughness as well going on to sort of really buff the HP a little bit more. I don't think it matters too much in the sense that I think Owen, because of obviously hitting the Radiant Charizard for weakness, can KO any... Uh, can carry the Radiant Charizard anyway, but we know that there's a right hand in hand, so, and yeah, Brennan's gonna play that and just use that to attach an energy to the Comfig and then just That's retreat it manually. Retreat. Yeah, of course. Not much for him to look to get out of the deck right now. None of the cards really useful to him. The Chorus not able to be played. Um, maybe good to get in hand though. Obviously he was able to uh, Pell Pad the Claras back in the deck. It might draw them into those a little bit easier. However, probably not the best idea. He knows what's there. Two VIP, two Chorus. 
and interestingly enough actually opting to attach the energy to the bench come Faye, what this says to me is that Brennan already has a switching out in hand and is essentially banking himself a little bit of insurance so that when the Radiant Zard gets knocked out on the next turn, uh, Brennan can bring up the Comfey and then use Flower Selecting after pal padding the Claras back in and manually retreat to the Charizard again to win. Yeah, that's great. I really like that as well. Just thinking ahead a little bit, what these great players do. You talked a little bit yesterday, what separates good and great players and thinking these turns ahead and making sure you have the answers is what makes it. And the scoop up net is that retreat that he was looking for. And of course, Charizard coming up for that big combustion blast 250 damage into Pelkia V-Star and two more prizes for Brennan at the end of this yeah. turn. Now, I'm just going to take a quick look at uh, Owen's list because there is one way that maybe Owen could scupper this plan if, ah, oh, no, okay, so Owen is not playing Lost City. So there is no way for Owen to be able to take the Radiant Charizard entirely out of play. Otherwise, that could have been an amazing move to sort of seal this game back in his favor. But doesn't really have that, so nope. Instead, Radiant Charizard gets a knockout on the Palkia. Owen's going to have to think about what to bring up. Obviously, if you bring up the Radiant Greninja, then Brendan can't, can't take the win off of that, so that's one thing to maybe consider. But, in fact, no, no, there's, there's no buts about it. Maybe that's just what you have to do, but Owen's bringing up the Palkia instead. I think that an interesting thing Wait. is that Owen here has to play a bit of hope. Yes. He has to KO this Charizard, hope that Brennan isn't able to see the Pelpad that he just took off his prizes in order to get the Clara for another attacker to come back into the deck. This Pelkia is very susceptible to this Charizard. It will be able to take a KO, but obviously not if Brennan Wait. doesn't see the things that he needs. Wait, actually, no, I just realized something. The Cape of Toughness is completely huge because, of course, Radiant Greninja does 90 damage. 90 uh, times 2 is 180. With the Cape of Toughness, the Radiant Charizard actually survives a hit from Greninja. It does. It survives a hit from Greninja. Obviously, that Manaphy is still in place. The Greninja not even able to hit the bench to at least take one prize. And, of course, it means that Pelkia probably always able to one-hit KO that Radiant Charizard just by hitting it for weakness. However, if it goes down before it's able to get rid of it twice then it's going to be a tough finish of the game for Owen. It's been very close so far. Both these players neck and neck in this. No one really pulling ahead at any point, but it seems right now Brennan with the advantage. But here it goes, Roxanne, and he is down to two cards in hand. Roxanne, absolutely vital play for Owen there. Really got to reduce Brennan's chance of being able to both dig for the power pad and then afterwards dig for the Clara to steal the game. It's really, really going to come down to what Brennan draws off of this Roxanne. If... Uh, you know, if it's some useful finds, uh, if he finds one of his Chorus's experiments, for example, then it'll probably be in a, in a good way. But but then again, no, you can't play the Chorus's experiment because then you can't play the Clara. So uh, actually, this is really, really, really strong from Owen here, but be rock standing at the exact right time to scuff up Brennan's plans. I bet he's glad he didn't play that rock stand now earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... so Owen now, uh, looking at his hand, there's not too much going on. There's not a lot that he needs to do either. He just needs to make sure that this yeah. Pelkia carries Wait. him through. And the Pelpad off the top deck. That is huge from Brennan. In this round 14, he is about to take full advantage of this. He has the flower selecting available to him. Well, just the two Clara maximizing his odds. He doesn't want energy. He doesn't want anything else in the way. He just wants the maximum odds of hitting these. He knows he has the answers here. The Confe energy on it already. All he needs now is the Clara. Can he hit it on his flower selecting? This is all it comes down to at this point, flower selecting. Flower selecting. Does it the Clara? Chorus and fire energy. I think that's a miss. It. He misses it. Oh, head in the hands. It's, I mean, it, you know. It's it, not the end of the game yet, though. No, fire, but chorus, chorus experiment. Oh, no, that's not going to do it. Oh, such a heartbreaker. Too many cards in the deck, so not quite able to guarantee hitting the Clara enough and Owen will take game one. One mana fee prize for Owen. Not really relevant in this matchup, but of course a one-off, a VIP pass and a Sobble there. Yeah, uh, so both of these players with workable prizes, I'd say. Um, although having said that, Brennan only plays one boss's orders and that, that isn't the prizes, so that will be frustrating. Same with Owen, actually. That, so they're both prizing a one-off boss there. At least it's equal. It's in the same spot for both <laughs> as well. <laughs> so both have access to it, probably after one knockout. The VIP here with Brennan starting the game. That's Sableye in the active. I bet he would prefer a different psychic type being comfy there. Yeah, in Comfe. However, certainly. to hit the bench now. Yes, so... Battle VIP pass, two companies getting thrown down. 
and uh, actually Brennan just passes. So knowing how quickly that both players need to, well, he needs to play specifically in order if he wants to make a comeback. And so throws it over to Owen as soon as he's done with that. Um, Owen, for what it's worth, throws a water energy onto the Sobble, has a Palkia to put down as well, but looks like not much else other than that. Uh, Roxanne can't play that right now. A, a scoop up net, another Palkia. And a Palkia Vista. Oh, that is also not a great hand, not actually. Not a great hand at all. And of course, even if um, Owen is able to keep calling here for a Sobble or two, no Drizzile yet, no, no Evo Incense. So not a guarantee that he's even able to utilize these Sobbles next turn. And of course, putting them down in the first place, a risk. Uh, potentially. Although, I think the thing that helps there is that uh, oh, uh, Brennan did not get a single card into the Lost Zone. So I think 10 on turn 2 with none on turn 1 is probably a little bit unlikely. So in that, ca in that sense... Uh, Owen's a little bit more safe. You'd love to see it, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we absolutely would. And just checking the prizes, they're probably noticing that that key boss's order is currently in the prizes. Two Sobble coming down. And to be fair, Brennan, he needed this game over quickly, and he's going to be really happy with how poor that start was. Yeah, no kidding. And not only that, but, I mean, Owen is very much riding off the top of his deck right now. As we saw, there are there's almost nothing to work with. There's Sure, there's a water energy and a power cure, so maybe you can just take a, a knockout, but not really much else other than that. So, yeah, let's see what Brennan can do now to kind of try and capitalize on this poor start from Owen. Uh, doesn't look like Brennan has got too much going on either. Is he like a drapey on a psychic energy? Drapey Cape of Toughness? It doesn't even have a supporter? It doesn't look like, but that flower picking might be able to fix that. Is there anything there? Roxanne, oh my goodness. pointless at this point in the game. Not a supporter you want to see, but a scoop up net. Able to use another Comfe now. Coming in, can flower selecting do the job? The Zard and the Psychic Energy. Another card you want to see late game. These are all the cards Brennan needed at the end of the last game coming to him now, and we might actually see that Poker Gear come off for the first <laughs> time. <laughs> yes, we might. Poker Gear going to... after. Well, Quick Ball's going to get played first, probably just to thin one more card out of the deck to make it most likely to hit that Chorus ex Experiment and uh, going to be grabbing the cram around from that as well because, of course, that's the most likely thing to be able to attack right now given how uh, the Lost Zone is looking a little bit empty right now. But after this, going to go for the Poker Gear and, like I said, for the first time, actually using it rather than just making it Lost Zone fodder. Yeah, I'm excited to see this. I hope it pays off well. The odds are lowered by that quick ball. Is there a supporter? And yes! Chorus. And that is the card that Brennan absolutely wanted to see. If he could pick one of them to put in that pile, he definitely would have. And now he can start getting those extra two cards in the loss. So meaning Cramorant will become active, able to take a knockout on that Sobble, turn two. A sigh of relief there for Brennan as he does find the Colossus experiment off of the Poker Gear and uh, finds like not an ideal set of cards, but I think he's going to be able to you know, pick two of those. Decent. If actually just goes gets rid of two pokers off straight away, it's like, nah, don't need that. <laughs> Brennan, knowing that one of those Claris is in the prizes at the minute, opts to take that instead of one of the poker stops, but got a lot of else that he needed. Just that scoop up needed now to get that Kramer out in the active, that 110, taking a knockout on the Sobble. Usually just an average turn, but at the minute, Owen's board is not looking good. This is putting on a lot of pressure. This one prize is doing 110 damage. 110 damage, especially considering how slow Owen's start has been, is exactly what Brennan needs uh, to see right now. Uh, unlike in the last game, Power Pad being played very early, actually just throwing the Chorus experiment straight back into the deck, uh, and then Spit innocently takes a knockout. What does Owen draw for turn? Is it anything useful? He shrugs his shoulders. I think it might be decent. Uh... It's, oh, no, oh, it's an Irida! It's an Irida! And Owen has top deck the Irida, allowing him to get into this game. You would imagine here we're going to see that Greninja being able to draw more cards, an item card, getting a Drizzile perhaps, and he is right back in it just with that one draw, showing the strength of Irida. Goodness gracious me, what a top deck from Owen right there. Now right back into this game as he's able to find an item, find a, a Drizzile, of course, and start that Inteleon chain going. I, I think... You literally could not have picked a better top deck in that you instance. You absolutely could not. Irida and Pelkia going hand in hand in the video games. And once again, she is here to help. <laughs> she is moving the deck along. Owen now back in the game. It looked hopeless at first. A terrible turn one. But now turn two is looking much more fruitful. And Brennan has no idea how much that could have gone wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Owen is uh, going to be bringing the biggest sigh of relief in the world as now off of the shady dealings from the Drizzle, are going to grab a quick ball. Probably, I imagine, going to be grabbing a Radiant Greninja. Of course, it's going to be very... There's so many energy in the hand right now, and you both want to get them in the discard pile and draw more cards, so... There it is. As we said, that Drizzle coming down at some point this turn, the Gren Radiant Greninja. The deck likes to do the same things. It's pretty uniform. See cards, play cards, 
do subspace well, and that is the way it goes. You've got to be thinking for Brennan here, at the back of his mind, as long the longer this game goes on as well, the less chance he has of actually getting a win here. Yeah, you've got to be thinking that, and not only that, but now with the scoop, oh, scoop of net as well, so actually, oh, there's no Manaphy on Brennan's side of the field. There is no mana fee on Brennan's side of the field. That star portal coming out. Three energy already in the discard this early in the game. And Owen has completely turned the game on its head. He has flipped the coin. He has rolled the dice. And wow, has it paid off. My goodness. And look at this now. Drizzle again coming in to find another trainer. And Brennan's going to be left with no comfies after this. No comfies. Obviously, only four in there. Spit innocently. The only thing really going on his side of the board. He has been left hopeless here. <sighs> What a devastating turnaround from Owen. A one-card top deck that turned from... We were literally just saying, oh, Owen has a super slow start. There's not very much he can do. And now he's in a completely dominant position in this game. I think Owen here needs to count his lucky stars. That has gone as good as it possibly could for him. That quick ball, obviously, earlier in the turn for that water energy. Again, using concealed cards. Getting all three in there. Max efficiency off a star portal. And, of course, max efficiency from Moonlight Shuriken to Confei. In the bin, Brennan's turn. What do you do here, Brennan, here? In, in all honesty, a uh, well, Sableye to put down, but uh, sure, an escape route, but you're not switching into a Comfey. You can't have, you don't have any more means of getting more cards into the Lost Zone. So, I mean, all you can really do is to try and uh, wait, buy some time with Sableye, perhaps? I think the escape route, I don't know if there's too much else going on in Brennan's hand. I can see... Is that a Marnie? I think so. He is able to at least do that. Obviously, a Clara there, able to get some of the Confe back if he wants. But that Greninja, obviously, only attached because he's not putting enough pressure on Owen's side of the board. He could manually attach to get that Greninja going again, but no Mana Fear. Yeah. And the Marnie, he's hoping to see some answers here. We need an attacker. We need more cards in the Lost Zone. He would have hoped that it was a Colorus, but unfortunately, just to shuffle in, draw five, and Owen gets four. Yes. So. Finding another Cram Ranch Cape of Toughness, but no. Oh, a good set of five cards. No. Two VIP pass. The perfect garbage is now is just it, garbage it, in it, that it. hand. Not at all. And Brennan is wiping his brow. He knows that this is not looking good. He's sinking here under the weight of Pelkia V Star as Owen goes back into his deck. A level ball. There's no pressure from Sableye here. He's free reign now. He can play down these lower HP Pokemon. The Sobble, the Zigzagoon. The Zigzagoon it is. Yes. I'm, I'm still I'm still in a slight shock about what happened just there. <laughs> that turnaround was absolutely unbelievable. This is why we do the casting, though, Freya. <laughs> we love seeing those vital top decks. It's probably the most exciting part <laughs> of the TCG that we have. It really is. Melanie as well going on to the Palkia um, with the energy so that I imagine Owen would also want to attach a water manually to the Radiant Greninja, maybe yeah. to do another Moonlight Shuriken. Because of course, just keeping that pressure on just in case, making Brennan sweat a little bit, knowing that he needs that mana fee. Otherwise, the threat comes into the active again and does its business. And of course, Owen doesn't know this, but uh, Brennan really has no means of finding a mana fee next turn. His hand is completely unworkable right now. And Brennan's going to be hoping for some similar fate as his brother coming into this top decking exactly what he needs but right now i think he's so far behind i don't think any card helps obviously brennan the best he could hope for with this amount of time is a tie as well but it doesn't even look like that's likely at this point as the intellion comes down shady dealings two trainer cards out of the deck as owen continues to fly it was a bumpy and turbulent ride that turn one but his wings are soaring now and he is pulling far far ahead Yes, cross switch uh, coming out after from the Shady and Intellion, as well as a Capacious Bucket to grab two more Water Energies, so that way uh, Owen will have the extra manual attachment from hand to hopefully go for a second Moonlight Shuriken and really, really, you know, cement this uh, lead that he's uh, built up so quickly. Um, but for this turn, it's almost certainly just going to be subspace well knockout on the Sableye. Yeah, you would imagine that Pelkia is just ready to go here. The energy in hand possible for the attachment, oh. but the cross switcher oh, no. choosing to take the Charizard instead, knowing that that become a threat when Owen goes down to three prizes left, but instead taking it away. And we know Freya, there is nothing in Brennan's hand right now that can sort that problem out. No, absolutely not. Um, Owen still has a, does have a manual attachment to do, so maybe considering whether it makes more sense to do it onto the, oh no, opting to, maybe was there attachment already this turn? Did I miss I it? I don't think there was. Maybe just holding onto that and he does see the confe at the top of the deck. But it looks like it's and just, just going to be. 110, Brennan wow. is sinking here. 
Owen is a shark in the water. He's ready to bite. And this Pelkia is looking more and more powerful now. Another quick ball coming down. Will Owen go for another Pelkia here? Yes, a backup attacker just in case this Pelkia falls. However, it is looking increasingly good for Owen. Yeah, Brennan is not even close to getting a Lost Mine going. And meanwhile, Owen is, just has all the attackers and... In this instance, he very clearly has enough time to just take six knockouts. We say that, oh, sure, it would be more ideal if you could take two at the same time, and it is. But, I mean, when you're this far ahead, it doesn't really even matter. doesn't really matter, and we keep mentioning the time now. The time, both important for Owen to try and get the second win, but far more important for Brennan at this point. He's trying to get into a game. Uh, and, and he concedes. And he, concedes. he sees the mana fee, knows that he needed the scoop up net to make anything happen on that turn with his hand. It is a really dreadful hand. He's showing Owen this is how bad that it got. And unfortunately, that choice, we're talking about flower selecting, sometimes making these really, really difficult decisions. And of course, the, the Manaphy needed to stop that Greninja from happening, but also the scoop of net to be able to have an attack at all that turn.